right, y'all. The sled warming up. I'm gonna take have it for a little run. Wanna go for a run? Oh, she's still idling a little high though. Well, it's definitely warm because it's about 30 degrees. It's been running for about 15 minutes. Don't get in the front, you're going to get run over. Go! Have it, come on, don't. Wants to lead the path. Thinks you're gonna. Thinks you're gonna stop. Come on, you're ticking me off. Now he's running. Come on, boy. But he's a little spry. So he uh, just turned seven, so he's not that old. Hello, Mel. Who's a good boy? Uh, I tried to go that way the other day. Last year, me and my friend Tom made a trail that way. It goes up that little hill, and then you, there's a jump out into the, that little field area. But that pile is actually a bunch of brush and shit. There's not enough snow to. You're gonna get run over. Forgot he was there. I almost hit him. Come on, move. If you want to lead, then lead, run! Now he's tired. Come on, race! Come on, run! I built this thing, I when I clean the carburetor, I set the idle at right about 17 so it didn't load up because these motors like to uh this motor in this sled's actually 30 years old, it's a 1990. This sled was actually originally a 95 Polaris Indy 500 EFI and as you know or some of you might know they uh the them old EFIs they tend to have problems electrical problems and so I went through that whole thing ended up being the ACS unit and uh I think the throttle positioning sensor so, you stay. Which, the ACS unit is discontinued. It's a part you can't get anymore. So, 
can see now she's idling where she should. Uh, so, that being said, I, uh, I, asked for some help online. My buddies at uh, HCS forum, the Hardcore Sledder forum. Look into them. It's a good bunch of guys. They'll help you out with these, any questions you have when it comes to riding these older sleds. There's a lot of knowledgeable guys on there, but they kind of led me in the right direction. So I found out what was wrong with the sled. And uh, they told me I should just convert it to carbs. But blah blah blah. If you convert it to carbs, you gotta first of all you gotta buy the carbs, and you gotta you gotta change the intake boots because the the boots that come off the motor for the injection system are not the same as for the carbureted engines. So. You have to change those, you have to change your airbox because the boots for the airbox aren't the right size for the carburetors. Then you have to get longer, um, you know, you have to get all the cables that you need, you have to get the clutch, uh, choke cable, you have to get all the cables that you need, there's a, you have to drill hole, there's a pre, there's actually a pre-drilled hole in the block of that engine, that EFI engine for people that convert to carburetors. And, um, and you just have to knock it out with a punch or you can drill it out a little bit, but it's pre-threaded and everything. So you just put a, a thread, a, a nipple on there and it, that's where you hook the, your vacuum line up for your, your fuel pump. But I didn't want to go through all that. I've already been working on this sled since, uh, I don't know, mid-July, and um, I picked this sled up from my buddy Tom last, at the end of last season, and it still ran for, I don't remember, two, three hundred bucks. It ran all right, um, it had its issues, and I, uh, what was that? Did you see that? I don't know, but, so anyway, I'm making this a really long story, but, Another friend of mine had a 90 carbureted 500, you know, Polaris 7500, and the odometer said that it only had like, I don't know, 1,250 miles on it or something like that, so I said, well, let me see what's up with that. So I went, you know, the sled wasn't all together, it was, you know, just, it was a parts sled, it had some parts, a lot of parts on it but the motor was all intact with the carburetors and everything and so I saw it, I didn't get to see it run, I, I watched it fire over, I dumped some gas down the cylinders and it fired off, I made sure that it ran at least. Checked, got it home, checked uh, you know, um, the compression, it had 20, 125 in each cylinder, I said oh that's sweet, so I took the carburetors off the motor, cleaned them up real good, started that process, I ripped the whole engine, the EFI engine right out of this sled. I had to change the mount plates because they were a little different and the pain, one of the pain in the nut things was that I actually broke one of the motor mounts but luckily I uh, I have had two other parts that I laid here so I had you know I had one to put back on it but um that was a pain in the ass because I had to drop the whole track again and everything back out of it but it is what it is there's not much to these things you can do them relatively quickly if you know what you're doing and uh so I did all that, and then the third sled that's part of it is obviously this doesn't look like an EFI, except for the seat where it says EFI, or kind of used to say EFI, and obviously it says touring on the side panel there, because I bought an Indy Trail off of a friend of mine that I met online. What's up, Trevor, if you're watching this? Um, and it had the extra 10 suspension, so I ripped all the suspension off back and front of the EFI, because it was a little messed up from, you know, ditch banging and shit, and uh, I put the extra 10 on there, and I heard a lot of things online about guys saying it doesn't work, it throws, makes your steering fucked up, and 
I don't know. It seems to be working fine for me. I got this. I got the shocks are almost like they're like brand new. I um, got them adjusted all the way down because if you have them adjusted up at all, the sled looks like it's gonna rocket into space. But um, it's not that bad now that I've got the ass end adjusted properly. But the only bad thing about it that I don't like, I mean, it steers fine. It's it's perfectly. It runs. It's a whole different machine. It runs right way better than it did last year. Um, <laughs> the thing that was messed up is I've got uh the track sticks out so far now that my original flap got sucked up in there and it all got all shredded so I trimmed it down but then I was getting snow shoved all over my back you know duh um bonehead move so what I did was I took another shitty flap off part sled that I have and I made these little mounts that come out and actually up a little bit but um and I just bolted into it so yeah now the snow doesn't cover my back and those mounts keep it from getting sucked up underneath there and it runs pretty good I've got um I'm not really sure about this exhaust pipe um uh, it helps I turn that off uh, oh, why'd I choke it Come on. There it is. He's coming. Um. So, what was I saying? Oh, I'm not really sure about this exhaust pipe. Seems to be running good around the backyard. Uh, I don't really like how it runs on the warmer days. Kind of takes a while to get going and. I don't know. Seems to be running good though for, you know, combined plus 30 years of how old all these sleds were. And, uh, you know, original carburetors that were on the motor, they weren't really, they had some wear to them and stuff, but I figured, hey, it's a project sled. See if I can get it running, and it seems to be running fine. Uh, I might mess with the tuning a little bit more, try to sync the carburetors up a little better uh, but yeah seems that's the indie project in total that I've been working on uh, see how she goes now, right now I'm just riding around my house I ran a property in on the west. And uh I don't know what just happened, but I uh I ran about four acres in West Glenville. And conveniently for me, I'm not really into dirt bikes. I like riding four wheelers and stuff, but conveniently for me, the landlord and, and his kids used to like riding dirt bikes all around this, pro this property. So there was a bunch of trails cut into these woods back here, and uh, got all this big wide open space here to to send it. Larry the Enticer, my, my hero. I'm sure my dog's going nuts. I locked him in the, in the garage. up and goes, you know, she, she goes, for 500, you know, being 30 years old, oh, this is pathetic, guys, this amount of snow, two weeks ago, maybe three, two or three weeks ago, I literally had two feet back here, now it's all gone, 
opening day of the trail, around here anyway. Yeah, that's me slamming on the brake, because <laughs> as you can see, I don't know, there's it's quite a big straightaway there, but you know, you only get up to I don't know, I've I haven't really looked at the speedometer actually as fast as I can get going right there before I wanna hit the brake, but uh I'm thinking it's probably about 45, 50 miles an hour you can get going on that straightaway right there. Maybe faster if I, you know, really laid into it, but when there's not a lot of snow, it gets bumpy at that one end, and I'm going up the hill towards the house, and I'm always getting nervous that I'm not going to be able to stop on time, so I'm slamming in there. Puppy! Who's my other puppy? Timber! What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's Lucy over there. Popping a squat. One nugget. Two nuggets. Hi, yeah. baby! He's just being a jerk. With the pump that brings the water into the house? Yeah, or the well's a little out of water. That sucks. I'll look at it when I go inside, I guess. 